Today we're looking at the Emancipation Proclamation. Hello and welcome to the Daily Bell Ringer. Please don't forget to subscribe and take a look at the questions down in the description. Also, I'd love to see your answer to question number five in the comments below. So after the Union forced Robert E. Lee and Confederate forces to abandon the Maryland campaign at the Battle of Antietam, President Lincoln seized the opportunity to make a bold move by issuing the Emancipation Proclamation. So what was the Emancipation Proclamation? It was an executive order signed on September 22nd, 1862, just five days after Antietam, that stated as of January 1st, 1863, all enslaved people in rebelling states would be free. Now, first, a couple of things. What is an executive order? An executive order is a written and signed published order from the President of the United States. It is not passed by Congress, and Congress cannot change it or get rid of it. However, Congress can pass legislation that basically blocks it, such as cutting off funding to whatever initiative the President is trying to support. This is where we need to look back at the Constitution and understand that the President has executive powers that were not really clearly defined in the Constitution. Second, of the four million men, women, and children living in slavery at the time, Lincoln did not free any enslaved people in the order. It only applied to states where, that were rebelling, and they obviously were not following federal law and not going to follow an executive order. The border states that remained loyal to the Union but still had slavery were excluded from the proclamation. Lincoln wanted to make sure these border states did not leave and support the South. So Lincoln had urged those states to gradually emancipate and free people. But if you were to think back to the time period of sectionalism and how honestly on every front the federal government had defended slaveholders' rights to hold people in slavery, you might be wondering how Lincoln was able to issue the Emancipation Proclamation. After all, the Supreme Court had declared slavery to be constitutional in the Dred Scott decision. During the summer of 1862, Congress had passed two laws pertaining to enslaved people. First, the Militia Act, which allowed African American men to serve in the Army as laborers, not soldiers. Second, the Confiscation Act, stating that all slaves taken from Confederate supporters would be permanently free. Keeping these acts in mind and, and the surprising military success of the Confederacy he was having in 1862, Lincoln wanted to take away anything that might aid the Confederate's cause. So he argued he had the authority to free enslaved people as a military necessity under his power as commander-in-chief of the armed forces. Lincoln stressed that enslaved people were aiding the Confederate cause by provi providing labor for them. So in order to defeat the Confederacy militarily, it was ne necessary to, to free enslaved people. Furthermore, in the proclamation, uh, Lincoln opened up full military service for African Americans. Now the Union had even more manpower to call upon to fill their ranks, and thousands of African Americans rushed to join and fight for the Union. Also, by issuing the proclamation, Lincoln ensured that Britain and France, who were very much opposed to slavery, would not come in to aid the Confederacy. Lincoln knew well that as soon as the war ended, the Supreme Court would tear his Emancipation Proclamation apart, and slavery could possibly continue. That is why Lincoln frantically pushed for the 13th Amendment to be passed before the war ended in 1865, so slavery would be ended permanently. Many military leaders told Lincoln that white soldiers would not fight for, for ending slavery. We have to remember that most Northerners were not opposed to slavery for moral reasons. Most Northerners were opposed to it for economic reasons. Racism and injustice were just as rampant in the North as it was in the South. And so Lincoln really had to try hard to sell this idea to Northerners that our nation was founded on the principles of freedom and liberty and that slavery was really, you know, not consistent with that. Lincoln had been working on the proclamation since July of 1862 and had wanted to issue it earlier, but his cabinet advisors advised against it, saying that the nation was just simply not ready Ready for it. They convinced Lincoln that if he was going to issue this proclamation, it had to be after a major Union victory, which was hard to come by in the summer of 1862. Although Antietam was not an all-out Union victory, Lincoln felt it was enough to issue the proclamation. And so as soon as the proclamation was issued, printers began making collectible prints of the Emancipation Proclamation. Several, several are on display today in museums, but the original proclamation, which was a five-page document with a signature page at the end of it, is today kept at the National Archives in Washington, D.C. So although Lincoln did not officially free any enslaved people with the Emancipation Proclamation, it shifted the focus of the war. From January 1863 on, the war was not simply about keeping the Union together. Now it was a war to maintain the Union, but also to ensure the liberty for all Americans. Lincoln, I believe, said it best in his famous Gettysburg Address, that this nation under God shall have a new birth of freedom. So with that, hopefully you learned something, and thanks for watching.